Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. I do apologise if there's any issues with the sound. We are having an off day with the lapel mics, unfortunately, at this moment in time. But we have got a new set turning up, hopefully any day now, which will fix the issues that we have with this. But allow me to introduce you all to the Norica Hawk Elegance GRS. That is absolutely stunning. It really is. The one thing I will say is that uh, already I'll tell you she is a long gun. You may have noticed that we've actually got a different aspect ratio going on with this video recording what we're doing now because the standard uh, unit that we was using or setting we was using, the gun would not fit <laughs> in the whole screen anyway. It's a big gun. It's like the Norica Storm we reviewed um, last year, I think, maybe even longer ago than that. But um, yeah, it's a very interesting looking gun. Straight away I thought, I want to get some screen time with that and I want to see what this gun's really capable of. Now it is a gas ram, so it will be interesting to see how it handles, maybe compared to the Storm that we had, uh, what we reviewed on here a while back. But as with all of our rifles, the looks will not save it from performance testing. So we're going to test it thoroughly. We we'll talk about the features, the handling, then we're going to go through the chronograph testing. Again, being a gas ram could be interesting. And also we're going to test it on our range. So why don't we get everything up and running and let's talk about the features of the Norica Hawk Elegance GRS. Right, so let's talk about features of the Norica Hawk Elegance GRS. As always, we start off at the rear of the rifle and you can see here a really nicely finished off rubber recoil pad, which is also ventilated for the people that are into that sort of thing. You've also got what you don't usually get on a lot of budget rifles. There's a sort of capping going between the stock here and the recoil pad, that white strip you can see going down, which the only unfortunate thing is you can see the finish of the stock has on this model at least slightly crept into the capping at the bottom there. But overall, it really does make the stock pop. Now on top of that, speaking of the stock, that is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know, maybe the camera won't do it much justice, I don't know, but that is a stunning looking thing. Now supposedly it is a genuine wooden stock, it's not just a piece of plastic that they've just painted like this, that is a genuine, I believe, um, I think it's a European beach stock, but it's got this sort of um, layer or something, or it's been dipped in something where you get this absolutely beautiful pattern come through, and it is really eye-catching. It, it's it's one of the main reasons why I wanted to review it, is just to show this stock off. It is a beautiful looking thing. Please God, it also shoots straight, but it's, it is just, when it comes to looks already, it's a winner for me. I don't know about you guys and girls, but for me, that is top notch. Moving slightly further along, um, actually no, we'll stick by the cheek piece here because it is an ambidextrous cheek piece. So our lefties can, uh, our lefty brothers, shall we say, can also have some fun with this gun. Moving slightly further along, you have got the typical dovetail rails on top and you have a scope stop mount on top of here. So if you, you won't get any creep with the uh, scope moving off the rails or sliding on the rails, say, depending on how the gun recoils, which again, usually on most spring guns, to be fair, or, or most of the gas rams really, these sort of mounts on top here are a little bit unnecessary, but again, we need to see how this thing kicks, but we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the handling section. Further down, we have another interesting bit. This has the Norica NATS adjustable trigger system, or literally stands for Norica adjustable trigger system. Um, I quite like this on the Norica Storm, but we'll see how it feels on this. In front of that, you can see there's another little toggle, which is pretty much perfectly placed. That is the safety. The interesting thing is, unlike most toggle safeties on the market, or it shares the same trigger unit as the Storm, but this is an automatic toggle safety, which I'm personally, I think I'm going to be a big fan of. Like I said, I liked it on the Storm, but again, we'll see how it feels with this one. Now in here somewhere, there is what Norica calls, well one, it's its gas ram system, but it also has Norica's recoil absorption system, or RAS. Is it a load of rubbish? We will find out when we actually start shooting the thing. Another thing that I quite like about this gun is you do get a full set of sights. So you can see they are fiber optic here. You've got the green fiber optic strips glowing up back here. And on the sight on the business end, you can see not only is it hooded, which I'm a big fan of, there's also the orangey red strip you can see glowing away gently just in there now. Features wise for a budget gas ram, I am absolutely well and truly impressed. I think even just simply for the stock alone, again, the, the gas ram and such, we'll see how that feels when it comes to the handling bit. But to look at the thing, I'll put it this way, if it had a Viarc badge, you wouldn't say, I'll put it this way, you would expect it to cost around 350 quid, 400 quid. I know that sounds like salesman talk, but just, just look at the thing. <laughs> but anyways, this might be meaningless if it can't shoot for toffee. But before we get to that, we're going to get the thing weighed and see just how heavy this rather ginormous rifle really is. So let's whack the scales up. 
Right, so we have the scales out and hopefully you can see here she comes out at 7.02 pounds. So it, despite the size, it's not a particularly heavy gun to be fair. This could probably be enjoyed by most people out there. So, so far all looks good for the Norica Hawk Elegance. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna chuck a scope on top of there and we're gonna put it to the shoulder and see how it feels. Let's move on to handling. So the Norica Hawk Elegance GRS, what is it like when it comes to handling? Well, let's find out. Now one thing I will say, what I did predict, simply because I haven't had a little play with it off screen, is um, it is balanced really nice. In fact, hang on, let me just show you, show you guys this. It's pretty much, can you see that? Almost dead centre. Now I had a feeling that was going to be the case because when it actually come to off screen, we had a few little shots with it with the standard sights, what we've got on there, obviously no scope, anything like that. And it comes to the shoulder and it's almost like, how do I describe this? It's almost like, you, not that you can't feel the weight, but you can't feel the gun is necessarily not pulling you. It just seems to, maybe it's just me, it just fits like a glove when you shoulder the thing. Now I know that sounds like firearms dealer, sponsored review, review ball crap. I know it sounds like that, but at the same time, it's hard to explain. It just seems to come and melt into your shoulder beautifully the balance on this thing is really superb potentially maybe even better than the storm and you know i love that gun now what i will say is this gun does have a fatal flaw however so it wins some but it also loses some and i'll show you what that is i'll see if i can get it to do it hopefully you can see that safety there apologies again if you can't but if you cock it see it's it's not doing it but, uh, but trust me if you don't cock it properly it suffers from what I like to call Virarc syndrome and the automatic safety doesn't always engage. For instance, you have to make sure that you really pull that all the way in for that safety to actually engage there because otherwise it won't, which is I don't like that one bit and the same reason I do the same thing, I attack Virarc for it with the record units and safeties and such. That is damn dangerous. But as long as you make sure to pull it in properly each and every time, you shouldn't have a problem. However, what is good news, and we could probably all see it coming from a mile off because that is not a short barrel on there, she's not a carbine, I'll put it that way. Cocking effort is non-existent on this gun. Um, there's a tiny little bit of resistance when you first begin to pull it, but then after that, a child could pull it down. There is next to no resistance in there whatsoever, which is really nice because some gas rams can be, not graunchy, but they can be a little bit stiff even compared to some spring guns. So let's whack that safety off and let's get a feel for the trigger and the shot cycle. So I don't know why I'm taking aim as this thing is not zeroed. So everybody keep your heads down. Hmm, interesting. Well, one thing I'll mention, I will have a few more shots, just a couple more, just to see if it's, I'm remembering this correctly, but there is something going on in there because the recoil, even for a gas ram, was almost non-existent. At least it seemed that way to me. It was just a little vertical jump. No side to side nastiness you can get every now and again. It was just a pop and that's it. Um, what I will mention is the trigger, although advertised as a two stage adjustable, which it is adjustable. You can see here, hopefully there's the adjustment screw hole down there. Um, this is the out of the box setting, but it's more like a one stage with creep, this particular Nats trigger. For instance, let's try that again. And hopefully, so, so easy. No, nope, no, nope. safety's still making me out to be a liar. It still did not engage. Uh, it still did not uh, fail, I mean, which I should be celebrating, really, but hey ho. All right, let's bring it back up. Right, so this is what I'm going to show you now. The first stage is almost non existent, really. I mean, you can see it wobbling a bit there, but that is the beginning of what is supposed to be a second stage, but it really just feels like creep. For instance, it doesn't fire immediately afterwards. You'll see there's still a tiny little like that, if you can see that, and then now it will... And you can see that wasn't even shouldered, that gun then, that was just gently rested on my chest there, and it still didn't really move all that much. Um, but yeah, the trigger may be... Uh, it's a hard one to judge, because it's not really a two-stage, at least not in its current setup anyway. Um, but it's not unpleasant at the same time, because if I just show you again, just one more time, there you go, safety didn't engage. <laughs> Told you I wasn't lying. Um, yeah, what I'm just gonna show you, just one more time, is, like I said, although it's not flicking it, it didn't engage, did it? Right, although, like I said, it is not maybe the smoothest trigger, it is very light, watch this. 
you can still fire it just with your little finger. So I can't give it 100% negative marks on that because, yeah, they're lying. It's more like a single stage than anything else. I personally don't mind that. I like a single stage trigger, but it's usable. There's, there's not really anything wrong with that. In fact, I don't know, you might even get a feel for it. You might love the thing, but then at the same time, you can adjust it out and, and maybe you might be able to put that second stage a bit more positive there. Really, I reckon the Sears probably want polishing more than anything else, but it is what it is. It's, it's a solid six and a half, seven out of 10 job. I'll put it that way. It's not nasty in any way, shape or form, just creepy. What is nasty, however, is that's plastic and this, if you can hear that, that's plastic as well. When you've got a gun, and I picked on the Storm for this, when you've got a gun that looks that nice, and again, maybe it's just me, but I think that is a gorgeous looking thing, and then you go and put plastic on the safety and on the trigger. Look, I know why it's done, because um, it's cheap, um, but no, apparently the reason why it's done is because they have a thing in certain countries called the drop test, and they cock the rifle and basically they drop it, and if it fires, it's not fit for sale over there. Supposedly, a plastic trigger will absorb vibrations better than what a metal one will, so you've got a better chance of passing, passing the drop test with plastic than what you have metal. Um, I would still rather have a metal trigger on that every single day, I've got to be honest. Um, but other than that, it is a lovely gun to shoulder and shoot. And like I said, the actual recoil on the thing is minimal. Now, what I will say, and it might not be coming through the camera very well, because like I said, at this moment in time, we've actually given up with the lapel mics because it was just horrible. Um, that on the top, that is not a safety, that is a cocking aid. Not a safety, sorry, that is not a silencer. It is a cocking aid. This is, you definitely get a boof when you pull the trigger with this. It's not massively loud, but it is present. But that is handling out of the way. We've got some amazing feet. It seems to shoulder and shoot bloody well. And we've also got some not particularly great bits, such as the safety, which doesn't always engage, and the trigger is... Some, you can easily get on with it, but some I can understand if they said, yuck. Uh, but, the recoil might be low because the gun's only doing about six feet pound. So, let's whack the chronograph out, put, as we usually do with gas rounds and spring guns, we'll put 20 shots through it, and let's see how she does. So then, let's see what she can do. Right, so we can definitely discount a lack of power for why the gun was recoiling so softly when we were shouldering it. She's definitely not lacking in that department anyway. Um, as you can see here, this for us will be considered full power, maybe a little bit too full power because I don't know if you can see it, but the first shot down there is 11.88 feet pounds, which is a little too close to the limit for my liking. But yeah, she's definitely a full power gun. Um, the consistency, this is where things for me get interesting because the usual people, what they say about gas rams, the Springer traditionalists, which I am myself, um, we do tend to say, yeah, but a gas ram, you've not got the consistency of the spring. They're a little bit up and down all over the place. Now, with this, we was unfortunate in the way that we had a low shot here, shot seven, if you can see that, 11.18 feet pounds. I know we did also have a 11.29, but we ended up with a spread of 24. Now that, it's not the best we've ever had, but at the same time, it's not the worst either. It's roughly the same going off memory as the Virac HW80, that was in the 20s as well, that we tested. And the HW80 is a phenomenal gun, make no mistake about that. So it's, it's about, my Norica's about Virac level. <laughs> That's never a bad thing to say, is it? It always sounds good, but yeah, it's, it's about the same level as that for consistency. The advantage that this gun has, or the disadvantage we had it at, was we've yet to clean the barrel on this. Um, what we plan on doing is, this is the test, what you can see out the box, because not everybody cleans their barrel, so this is roughly what you can expect. What we're going to do is put a few more shots through it. Maybe, hopefully, it will actually, the power will calm down a little bit, because it's a little too hot, like I said, for my liking. Um, but we'll give the barrel a scrub, let it in a deal a little bit more for the accuracy testing, and um, we'll see what it can do after that. So we'll give two chrono readings, like we have been doing lately with the spring guns. But overall, I'm actually pretty impressed. In fact, you can see it's already starting to run in from the 10th shot upwards, it's calming down. Um, you've got an actual spread, if you go from the 10th to the 20th shot, if my maths is correct, which it probably isn't, um, not that smart, I'm only a firearms dealer, remember? <laughs> but you've got a spread of 10 feet per second out of them 10 shots. That's pretty damn good. I don't think anybody would say anything other than that regarding that. That is impressive. 
but we've seen what she can do through the chronograph. So now it's time to get that scope zeroed in, which we'll do off camera. And we're gonna fire a few shots. We've got multiple different tins of pellets with us now, ranging from the cheaper stuff that everyone looks down upon and the, well, like the Air Arms Diablo fuel pellets we put through with this now, um, the higher branded stuff, more expensive stuff there. So it's gonna get a good coverage and we can see exactly what the gun can do. I will say this though, before we move on, um, the Norica is a little bit strange and I do think it has a very tight breech. Um, for instance, we originally tested it with the good old H&N or Remington field target trophy pellets. They're a very good pellet, very highly regarded. They're way up there with JSB and air arms, all that sort of thing. It was terrible through the chronograph with them. Um, I think it's because of the tighter skirt on there. We had a spread of must have been about 40 feet per second, 50 feet per second. And the gun was hopping between six feet pounds, nine feet pounds, seven feet pounds. We just could not get it, the thing, above nine. Uh, I can't remember if I actually saved the chronograph report, but I'll, later on I'll bring it up if I have, so you can have a look and see exactly what I'm talking about. We put the softer skirt pellets in there, and like what you can see here, she's definitely, she's not got a problem with, with a soft skirt pellet, we'll put it that way. But it's definitely something to bear in mind. Maybe if you're looking into one of these, I would highly advise a soft skirt pellet first, because to what we can see on the chronograph section, it is what it it seems to prefer. But that's enough warbling on about that. Let's move on now to our accuracy testing section and we'll get some pellets tested and I'll lay out a display like we usually do so we can see what it likes and what it doesn't. So let's move on and have some fun. Okay, so accuracy testing time. Now, one thing I will say is we hinted earlier that the lapel mics might have to come off, and right now, unfortunately, they are. They've completely given up the ghost with this Narika review, and we've had all sorts of technical gremlins creeping in. We've lost footage, we've had no sound in footage. Um, yeah, it's just not been a very fun time with this one for some reason, so I do apologise if you can hear background noise and such like that. But anyways, back on track. The accuracy testing. So what we're going to do is we've got the target set up at 25 yards. We've done some off-screen shooting, and this is why these pellets are in a bit of a strange order at this moment in time. Now, what I will say, you will notice there is no rest here whatsoever. And there is a very, very good reason for that. It did not like the rest one bit. I don't know if it's a Narika thing. I don't know if it's something to do with the length of the gun. I know how to shoot off of a rest. Uh, I don't like doing it, as I'm sure you all know. I prefer to go offhand anyway, but I know how to shoot off of a rest, but these guns just don't seem to like rests very much for some reason, at least not with me. But we did tons of testing. For instance, lots of testing. <laughs> this is with the rest, and you'll see, I mean, look, not really a group, not really a group. I feel a bit like Jack Nicholson in the, um, the first Batman film. I don't know if anybody, if everybody here has seen that, where he's going through the artwork and he just goes, crap. 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 And he finds one and goes, ooh, that I like. Yeah, we didn't even get that here. Um, Jack Nicholson would not be pleased. But yeah, basically all the groupings were the exact same. Just not all that great. No real group on the group. So what we did then was we had a few shots offhand, like we did with the Narika Storm, and things got a hell of a lot better. So to elaborate as to why these are laid out in this order, um, it goes top to bottom levels of craptastic. So up top we have craptastic so and there's some good pellets here as well you can see these are the remington or hn uh, match rifle uh, got some pro shots in there for a little bit of fun mix things up a bit super domes jsbs super fields again good pellet super field narikas because you know what why not give them a chance air arms you name it we got some pretty big brands in there but unfortunately they didn't really seem to put out the results we wanted down range Underneath that, on the mediocre to acceptable part, we have got the Remington Thunder Barracuda, or HN Barracuda. Now these were actually really quite good. I mean, we had not quite 20 pence groups with these. We had a couple of shots just out of the 20p coin, but the main cluster sitting underneath. And it's perfectly usable, to be fair with you. And maybe they could have been the number one pellet, if not for the fact that we also had the JSB Exprect. Exprect? There you go, that's a new one. The JSB Express Exact, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, we also run these through it, and these were number one without a doubt. And we'll put footage up now of the testing at 25 yards. Now, unfortunately, we've lost the footage because there was actually three other tins of pellets that did group quite well, and those were the HN Remington FTTs. We also had the QYS pellets and the um, Gamekeeper uh, Rat Dispatcher pellets which is sort of like a wad cutter design we haven't used them very much but they actually did a very very good job down the range at 25 yards now the JSB exact did beat a lot of them and like I said unfortunately we lost footage for the other three so thankfully we've still got the footage for this one we'll put that up there now for you to take a look at and we'll then move on to the 30 yard mark and see how we get on so let's move on and let's show you what it can do with JSB exact express 
Just stop filming just for two seconds because the wind, in typical Big Dan's fashion, has decided to pick up. God clearly is not a fan of, well, case in point, look at him drifting throughout the sky. You couldn't have timed that better. Anyways, I hope you can still hear me over that. He was quite low. But yeah, the wind has picked up quite badly as hopefully you can see through the trees blowing. It's actually, that one's not doing too bad, but I think that's sheltered by the uh, barn buildings. But yeah, we'll do what we can with the wind. Um, first pellets we're gonna try are the, let's go JSB Express. We'll try first. Hopefully they'll be able to punch through the wind just that little bit better, hopefully, at least at 25 yards. Then after that, we'll go, so we got JSB, we'll go FTT, then we'll go QIS, and then we'll let the new boy have a go. The um, the hunters, the flathead hunters. So let's see what we can do with that. Rat dispatchers, sorry, got the name mixed up. But yeah, we'll see what we can do with that and um, see which pellet the gun likes the best at 25. So let's get back to shooting. All right then, so accuracy test results at 25 and 30 yards. What do we think of the Narika Hawk Elegance? Well, at 25 yards, it's a bit of a weird one because to me that only looks like four pellet holes, but I can assure you that that is most definitely six. Whether two of them completely missed, like I said, it was windy, but it wasn't a hurricane, I'll put it that way. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you guys have got more of an idea than what I'd have when you watch it through the um, replay footage. But if we get the five pence piece of truth, and put it down there, you'll see that it is Oh, I can just about squeeze it under a five pence piece. Let's look at that side. You can see near the eight, you might be able to see there's a tiny little tear, but that's about it. So that's a five pence group there, potentially, because I can't see where the other shots went. Again, hopefully we'll hear the six smacks in the footage where it punches through the card, but there's a grouping, we should call it, under a five pence piece there. Then we had some shots at 30 yards. Now, when we extended it a bit, the... I think the Expresses, again, it is a windy day, or it was a windy day when we filmed this. The Expresses, being as light as they are, only 7.87 grains, I think the wind was starting to get to them just a little bit. And I think it was fourth shot onwards, I believe it was the fifth and sixth shot, things started to open up just a little bit. But again, we'll get the five pence piece down there. And you'll see it's not quite a five pence piece uh, group, it's more like a 20 pence group. But again, it's not bad. I mean, it looks messy, but the actual, when you take into consideration the actual... Um, size of it like I said there's a five pence what we use to measure the 25 yard group and it's not far off um, again bear in mind the conditions however I was a little bit annoyed with that which is why I had cheekishly um, four more shots off to the left I thought I, I know I can do better than that so I thought I'll do another four just to see and we did and you can see here there's three pellets going through the same hole more or less there just stretched it out a bit and typical of Big Dan's we have a flyer just up top however five pence piece of truth time and it's perfectly underneath there, so that's even at 30 yards, it's capable of doing that. Did I get lucky? Possibly. Did the wind ease off when I shot then like that? Maybe. Who knows? But overall, I don't think anyone would deny that that is very impressive at 25 and 30 yards. We both know I'd like to take it further than that, but the... Uh well, you can see it's still there, so I can't really. And with this weather, what we've been having out in the field is just going to be a complete waste of time. So unfortunately, for this review, we're going to be stuck at 30 yards. But there is one more thing regarding its performance I want to check, and we Ted said about this earlier. When we first chronoed this, we're going to use the exact same pellets. When we first chronoed this, it was mighty close to the 12 feet pound legal limit what we we're allowed to have in the UK without a firearm certificate. So I can hear our American friends laughing at us already. <laughs> or sympathising, one of the two. Um, but yeah, but what we're going to do now is we're going to get the chrono back out and we're going to have another, say, 20 shot group just to see if the gas rams have settled a bit. Now it's had a few shots through it. It's probably had about 
around 200 shots through the gun. So we're going to see if it's settled down or not, or see if, I don't know, see if gas rams are affected the same way as spring guns. Why don't we find out right here, right now? So we'll whack the chronograph out, have a few shots with it, and see how we get on. So, chronograph time, our second effort, how did the gun do? Well, I'm very pleased to report I can wipe the sweat off of my brow. The gun is behaving itself far better than what it was before. We had a high of 11.41 feet pounds, if you can see that there, and other than that, it settled to the very low 11, so I'm a very happy chappy about that. As mentioned, our legal limits over here are 12 feet pounds. If it goes over that, we need a firearm certificate or we need help. I'll put it that way, we need to get the gun sorted. Um, but uh, yeah, the gun has settled down very nicely. The best bit is that the spread is actually got even better. It's gone from, I believe, the 24s, I think it was, now down to 19, which is a, a quite a nice improvement. Again, same pellets as what we tested the first time. There's no funny business, anything going like that. So we can definitely say that uh, gas rams really do need to run in or settle down or burn off because no doubt that's probably still got some packing grease in there somewhere in the action itself. And the gun definitely does improve where performance is concerned. So I'm a happy chappy. Um, power wise, we can definitely still say that's healthy. So we can say it's a fairly consistent at 19 FPS spread. Bear in mind the gun's not run in. Um, like I said, it's had about 200 pellets through it around that, I'd say anyway. And that's a, a pretty generous figure when I say that. Um, yeah, it's still got some running in to do. And I'm sure the groups will only get even tighter perhaps with the more it's run in. So I am a happy bunny. So let's move on now to our final verdict and see just what we really think about the Narika Hawk Elegance GRS. So our final verdict of the Narika Hawk Elegance, what do we think? Well, I'm going to get into the negatives first because we, as you know, no rifle is perfect as we always say on this channel. And it's this is definitely not the perfect gun, no matter how much, as I'll explain later, I actually quite like it. Now, the first thing is the trigger and the trigger guard and such is very plastic. Now don't get me wrong, I like, it. well as plastic triggers go, this is actually quite a nice plastic trigger, it's got a good feel to it. However, the I just wish it was metal, I'll put it that way. You've got the stunning looking stock, but they've gone and chucked a plastic trigger and plastic trigger guard on there. Don't get me wrong, it's not the most expensive rifle in the world. I think SRP for this thing is around £250, I believe, um, and that's full whack. So it's not the most expensive gun in the world, but I'm sure even if it wasn't the nicest metal, they could have put a metal trigger blade in there. If they can do it with a B2, come on Norika, you can do it with this. Another thing I'm going to mention, as I'm sure you know is coming, is the safety. While an automatic unit, and I love the way it's positioned, I think an automatic toggle in front of the trigger there is a brilliant design, possibly at the moment what I've tested, my favourite design out of all of them. This one's a little bit naughty, and as we mentioned, suffers from Virarch safety syndrome in the way that if you don't cock it the whole way, sometimes the gun will cock itself, but it will not engage that safety. And I'm sure you can imagine why I'm not a big fan of that. When you buy an automatic safety, you want it to engage every time. Otherwise, what's the point? You only want that one time when you have poor trigger discipline or maybe you drop the gun, something like that, and it fires and, well, there goes something. I'll put it that way. So not a big fan of that. The other thing I'm going to say, this isn't really a negative as such, this is more a neutral. Uh, the gun does have a, an adjustable trigger, and the trigger itself, when you get used to it, like I was learning to get the feel for it with these, and well, let's be fair, the amount of target cards, the pellets I've put through this, you can tell I've, I've had time to get used to the trigger. It's actually not bad at all. It's fairly predictable when you get used to it. It does still feel more like a single stage than a proper two stage. There's a bit of sort of, it's, there's a slight gritty feeling when you're pulling it, and it, it's slightly notchy to go with it, but it's not heavy is the thing. So it's not something like, um, how can I put it, the XS38 underlever we reviewed, that was a non-adjustable unit, but it's, it was a little on the heavy side maybe, sort of not horrible, but there was a little bit of weight there and it was notchy at the same time. Granted, the more we shot it, it started calming down, but this trigger's not quite like that one. This one is actually light to go with it. You can set it to be light. So it's, it's a negative that it's a little notchy and it doesn't feel like a proper two-stage, but I've had far, far worse, I'll put it that way, so it's a, it's a neutral area. So the other thing I'm going to mention as well is when cocking, and obviously the size of the gun as well doesn't really help. I mean, the length of the barrel does make it, once you get that barrel moving, it's quite easy to cock. Uh, but the first stage, there is a little bit of stiffness there, which hopefully we did show off in the handling section of the review. Uh, the overall length of the gun, I mean, I'm standing back 
quite far now. Um, it is a long gun. A lot of the Narikas tend to be long. The Storm, the Dream Hunter, Underlever, they're long guns. And again, if you're someone maybe slightly shorter in stature, um, or you're thinking about getting this for a teenager, it might not fit very well simply because it's a bit of a Leviathan. But not a Leviathan in weight, which takes us into the positives. When it comes to weight, especially with the scope off, if you planned on using it simply with the sights, it is a lovely weighted and balanced gun. It's when it comes to feeling, especially with the, like we said, without the scope on top there, it feels far lighter than even its weight would suggest. I mean, it came out the scales, I believe, around seven pounds when we weighed it, and even that itself puts it about maybe on the lighter end of the scale, sort of mid lightness when it comes to the overall spectrum of spring guns and gas rams. But the way the thing is balanced, it almost—I know it sounds cheesy when I believe I said it um, in one of our earlier bits of footage for this review it almost sort of melts into you you don't really feel the weight it, the stock itself despite the length is a beautifully designed stock and onto the stock as we said just look at the thing as mentioned that is not synthetic that is actual beach that has been coated with something or dipped in something and it looks absolutely stunning and as we may have mentioned earlier it's lovely and soft and smooth to touch as well i am a big fan of that i also love the white capping on the rear there again this one's got a slightly weird finish going on at the bottom it's sort of the grayness of that stock seems to eke out into the cap but it might just be this rifle that that's like it either way it is a seriously fetching looking thing and i think if you had this at the range no matter where you went people would be toddling over to you saying "Ooh, what's that um accuracy wise the most important bit with these guns is pretty damn good it's got to be said that one's a bit of a gray area because i still don't really know what's going on with that i'll have a look when i'm editing it and see if i can count the shots that should have been a six shot group but i'm only seeing four so god knows what happened there uh, on the 30 yard mark it opened up a bit to begin with which again you must remember it is very windy when we're shooting this but we then had four more shots and it went under a five pence piece beautifully so let's just put it back up there to be sure so it's definitely got accuracy now, one thing I will say about this as well, another positive, but I've also then got to elaborate into, not why it's a negative, but why, well, I'll explain what I mean, um, save me rambling. The positives with this is it's advertised as having Narika's recoil absorption system. And like I've said multiple times, yes, it does sound like advertising hype and marketing jargon and all this sort of thing. But there's something going on with that because when it comes to recoil for a gas ram, Again, off the bench it didn't work, but it also didn't work with the Storm. So I don't know if it's the length works against them. I, I'm not an expert in that. I'm not going to pretend I am. Maybe it affects the way they recall if it's a long gun on a rest. Who knows? But it's a very soft to shoot gas ram. Um, when freestanding this thing, again, thank God we lost the footage for this because <laughs> I'm not a good freestanding shot. I, Big Dan will confess that right here, right now. I am a terrible shot freestanding. But the recoil, when shooting the thing, if you can imagine mill dots in a scope, it basically, the crosshair went straight up, say, one and a half mill dots. There was very little recoil to this. And again, if you can get somewhere, you're thinking about trying a gas ram, you can get somewhere we can actually try and shoot this thing. Have a few shots freestanding, and you'll see exactly what I mean. There is very little recoil with this, especially considering what power plant it's got. However... Why I've also got to elaborate on that is because, yes, if you're used to gas rams and you like gas rams, it's fantastic. However, there are a lot of Springer traditionalists out there that will still maybe not be the biggest fan of this gun because although there's less recoil, it's still gas ram recoil. Now, I know that sounds strange if you've never shot a gas ram before, but I'm sure the rammers out there will know what I'm talking about. Gas rams, when you pull the trigger, seem to kick sharper or faster into your shoulder. It's not almost the semi-relaxed feeling of a spring gun where you can feel that spring decompressing until it finally hits the end of its stroke. This is it's still a quick pump in the shoulder. There's less of it, but it's still the same type of recoil. So if you still don't like that feeling, it still might not be the gun for you. Another thing I'm going to mention, which I always say about gas rams, because I think it's actually as, as daft as it sounds, one of their best qualities, is the noise this thing makes when you're shooting it. It's just a lovely boof when you pull the trigger. Obviously, there's no real spring in there, so there's no twang, no nothing like that. It's actually quite a quiet gun to shoot. And again, as an overall package, if you like gas rams, yes, the safety's a, a, a bit annoying, and the fact that this one, it like the Storm, to be fair, which is a spring gun, it didn't like being shot off of a rest. But to be fair with you, I am actually quite madly in love with this gun, and I'm really, well, I'm glad that I decided to review it. I'll put it that way, because I saw pictures of it, and obviously we stopped Narika and things like that, and I saw it and I thought, I'm going to have a go at that, because you guys probably know if you've seen this channel, I do quite like touching the um, 
some of the weird and wonderful guns, the cheaper budget guns that don't get touched so much. And it's, I just see it as a bit of a shame because we don't all start this sport with a thousand pounds in our pocket to go get running. I mean, some of us don't even start with 400, 500 pounds for an Artemis sort of thing to get you into the PCP world. So I thought, let's have a look at some weird and wonderful stuff. And I'm so glad that this is weird and wonderful, but lovable at the same time. I thought that I was going to pick this apart to an extent and say, yeah, it's got a nice stock, but you know, it's not that nice to shoot. And granted, off a rest, like we've already said, it isn't great. But I am a very, very happy chappy with this. And again, you can see the groupings. Again, that's a bit of a weird one. I'll leave you guys to decide what actually happened with that. But with the groupings, what we've got here, you can see it has got a ton of accuracy. So this is where we end our verdict section with the two questions we always ask. Our, our target shooter is going to like this and our hunter is going to like this. And it's a hard one to answer. The target shooter section is difficult for the reason you already know. It doesn't really like being shot off of a rest too much, at least not in my experience. For that, you're probably not going to be the biggest fan of this gun. At the end of the day, you take part in target shooting to be as accurate as physically possible. And this, in my experience, with the wad of bloody target cards we had, it wasn't really up to the task. However, if you're a bit more old school like I tend to be and you want to shoot offhand, elbows on the knees job, it groups brilliantly it seems to want to be held the other thing i'm going to mention is speaking of holds is hold sensitivity now this is an odd one because with springers and gas rams and such the main thing what people try and say is yes you do the artillery hold and we did a video on hold sensitivity with our little xs19 spring gun and it doesn't always work with every gun and unfortunately with this one it really didn't work if i shot this with open palms my groups were very similar to what we was getting off of the rest People might like this, people might hate this, but this gun actually really likes being, not gripped and ripped, but it loves a firm hold. I mean firm in the leading hand and firm in your shoulder, and it becomes way more controllable. Again, don't wrestle the thing, you shouldn't have to wrestle it, let it do what it wants, but you've basically got to give it a tight cradle, and you'll get really good results with it. Now Hunters, again, is going to be a mixed bag, this is what I mean, it's a bit of a weird animal this one. Hunters will love it, because at the end of the day, that coating on there is going to be protecting the wood underneath. You'll probably see water will bead off of it and run straight off. It won't get soaked in or absorbed, anything like that. And being a gas ram, you can leave this cocked for extended periods of time, and it won't do any integral damage to the gun, which obviously a spring gun, you've got a spring under tension, and that's going to start wearing out after a while, I'm sure. But we do plan on doing a review on this, a test on that, just to see if it's a myth or if it is genuine truth, just for a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, that's the general consensus. Whereas with the gas ram, as we said, you can keep it cocked and it'll be absolutely fine. And for people out there that do a little bit of hunting, especially in the UK, where obviously we've not got the wild animals absolutely everywhere, um, you can sit there for hours waiting for one rabbit to turn up and things like that. And for that, this is really going to be your cup of tea. The reason why it might not be is, and it might just be me being shallow, but I wouldn't really want to mark the stock. <laughs> I think that looks great. Um, I wouldn't really want to scratch it or anything like that. But yeah, it's... It's a mixed bag for everybody, but that's our final verdict for the Norica Hawk Elegance. Will it suit everybody? Will it be everyone's cup of tea? Well, no, absolutely not, simply because of the power plant that will turn people off. But I do think that everyone out here that's interested in this gun, you can see, well, what the gun can do here. You've seen it's a full power and all that sort of thing. The advertising is true with most of it, even the recoil absorption technology. So if you've got interest in this gun, definitely see if you can shoulder one and have a play with it because it might just find its way into your cabinet just like i said not even just for the looks but because of the por the performance sorry that's on offer as well so definitely give the gun a look give it a shoulder but that pretty much wraps it up for this video thanks ever so much for watching everybody i am so sorry and i keep apologizing but i am so sorry about the issues we've had with this video and the time it's taken for us to get it out there has been nothing but terrible weather <laughs> terrible instances in the news everybody around the world suffering with and basically everything came to a standstill for a hell of a long time so we're getting back into it now we're back in gear the next gun we've got to review is the smk 208 super grade which is one of the guns on our list we'll get that done and scratched off and see what we think about that so we're back to springers next time and then soon we should have the rather lovely zabruya sapsan reviewed and we'll see exactly what that's capable capable of as well so thanks ever so much for watching we've got a lot of comments to respond to i believe we will get round to that uh, as soon as this is uploaded and if you've got any questions anything like that leave a comment down below or if there's any guns you want us to review again leave a comment down below we'll try to get to it as soon as we can but as we said we've got to see how things pan out first you saw how long this took but we're going to try and get back up to it so thanks ever so much for watching look after yourself everybody out there because that virus despite what people are saying is definitely still making the rounds and look after yourselves look after your family and we'll see you next time